Joining us today to talk about all of this and more is Ammon Bundy. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. You be sound fun. like it, huh? Yeah, it sounds fun. So uh, sounds who fun. are you for those that aren't familiar? So I uh, live in Idaho. I'm running for governor in Idaho. and um, But mostly I'm a husband, a father. Uh, I grew up on a ranch that kind of got famous in 2014, the Bundy Ranch. And uh, a lot of things happened there that maybe we'll talk about. Absolutely. Uh, get a chance anyway. Uh, so so there, there was a standoff with the feds. Yeah. I believe there yeah, my people went to prison. Been, yeah, my family been ranching there for, well, now 100, 150 years. Wow. And the uh, federal government came in and basically said that uh, we couldn't do it anymore. They wanted to make our ranch a mitigation area for the desert tortoise. And uh, my dad wasn't willing to give up his rights. And so he decided he was going to take a stand. And it got a lot of attention internationally and here in the United States. And that kind of kicked me out of my little comfort zone and ever since then i've been uh, fighting and standing up and helping people and now i'm running for governor right on well we'll talk about uh we'll definitely be talking about that that'll, that'll be interesting so thanks for joining us so if you would win the race what's the first few things you would do what's your policies that you're running on how would you change idaho so one is 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 abortion i mean we have this opportunity i am absolutely uh for protecting life i believe that life uh, begins at conception um, and so I think that we have to protect that life so number one or at least that's the first thing I, I will do um, and Roe versus Wade being overturned push it back onto the states so it makes it a lot easier for me to do that um, we also have like major problems in Idaho in the, well in the west because if you look at a map and people out east just don't realize this but if you look at a map East of the Colorado Rockies, the federal government controls 51% of the, the land mass. And in Idaho, it's 61%. And then they're controlling 72% of the subsurface mineral rights. Wow. And so it's making it so like Idaho can't even pay its own bills. Hmm. Like we're beholden to the federal government to pay our bills because they're controlling all our land and our resources. And so that, that battle has to be fought, and I plan on fighting How that. did the feds get control of the land? So it's a long, long story, but this is like the whole battle that my family was in, you know, that, that basically culminated in 2014 uh, because the states were enabled into the union and, and all the land and all the resources were supposed to then go to the state and the jurisdiction of, the, of that state. But through this environmentalist movement and because the, arid, the area is so arid, people didn't go live on it. It, they couldn't live on it. Mm -hmm. And the federal government came in later and claimed it. And now they're claiming it as their own. They're saying it's in trust um, and that they never, they never, uh, they never released it or, or disposed of it is the right word. And so there's this major battle with like families like my, my father, my family, and my father in particular, where they're trying to defend their rights. Uh, my, fam my family's been there for now almost 150 years. And the federal government comes in and says, well, we're, we're taking it from you. Well, there's this, and that's happening all over the West. And well, so- Well, I mean, but you gotta trust the government, right? They're, they're here to sure. help. Sure, yeah, they're here to help. And they're doing it for, you know, the right reason, I'm sure, you know. Uh, <laughs> what was it, the tortoise? Yeah, desert tortoise, but it-, it Well, you gotta protect the tortoise. I mean, well, yeah, on. yeah. I mean, what what is your protecting. family for all tortoise? That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean that's probably what my family been, doesn't right? need to make a living. They they can move to the city and and do whatever they're going to do there. Even though we've been well, there for 150 years, have you considered owning nothing and being happy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have a hard time considering that. I just can't see how it'll work. <laughs> There's some puffy pods out there though, and you know, video games, VR, they're they're pretty cool. Maybe yeah. the tortoise. How about how about this? Yeah, really, how about some bug protein? Here's, here's a compromise. We'll take your whole family. We'll put them in pods. We'll give them VR headsets that simulate working on a ranch out in Idaho. Mm, and all the bugs you could eat. <laughs> Nonstop bugs. Yeah, exo exoskeletons, right? That, that are bad for us. I, I don't know. Yeah, kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, indigestible bug, know. bug shells. So the feds came in and were like, by the way, we've owned this the whole time and you didn't know kind of thing? Or was, Did they offer compensation? Like, no, not at all. Right. Not at all. They No, so yeah. They did do that, uh, which is an absolute lie. They, they try to make the people of this country believe that that has always been in federal hands and that it wasn't disposed of to the state and to the people. And it's just a flat lie. Well, really, what, what it was is 
the West is just arid. Like there's, you can't have farms and you can't grow things in much of the West. And so people didn't settle there. And they just came in and said, look at all this land that no one's living on, no one's claimed. Mm -hmm. We're going to take it. But the problem is, is in the West, you don't claim the land. You claim like the grazing rights. Like my dad owns the grazing rights, the logging rights, the mining, the mi mineral rights. Right. And those were like deeded rights with the states. And so wow. here the Fed comes in, feds come in and say, well, we're taking the real estate. And therefore, every, anything else that has rights on it, we own, we control. And it's this huge messed up legal battle that's going on because my dad has my dad has grazing rights he has 11 of them deeded with the state of nevada and then the federal government comes along and says well we own the land we own the so you can't graze here and he's like wait a minute now that sounds bunk because i've been we've been dealing with it with this when we were uh, moving out to west virginia everybody warns you you're only buying surface rights. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, what does that mean? And that means that if somebody owns the mineral rights, they can come on your property in, in a way that's reasonable and start digging. And then I'm like, what? What am I buying then? Like, if I'm going to build something here, I can't have you come on with some machinery and start digging in my ground. Yeah, so they they separated that. This was all part of this. Uh, they separated, made it so that you can separate the real estate, the land, with the mineral rights. Right. And that, that, wasn't, that wasn't always the case. Remember the... Uh, uh, Beverly Hillbillies where yep. they bought this land and they were digging and this oil comes out next thing you know they you know they're millionaires and they moved to Beverly Hills yep. yeah well that's the way it used to be like if you own the land you also own the resources underneath it or above it yep but now big corporations will buy the land buy the mineral rights sell the surface to you and then in the event they actually find something show up one day and be like out of the way yep now yep to our uh, benefit, I suppose, there's not really a whole lot going on in West Virginia in terms of minerals. So unless they discover something they didn't know about before, some new mineral. Yeah, they're using all no. the coal gone mm -hmm. then because I thought West Virginia was all about coal. I think that's in the mountains, though, okay. like mountaintop and stuff like that. Right. I don't know for sure. What I do know is that when we were looking at land, we, we went over this and they were like, you don't have mineral rights. But to be honest, they've already done a sweep. Here's the report. There's nothing here. It's like mud and, and rock, like nothing <laughs> worth anything. But there's been a new breakthrough in underground scanning with, I think, lasers and there's uh, yeah. underground LIDAR. mapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it might not be LIDAR, but a form of laser underground mapping. So they might start finding crazy minerals deeper than you thought. I don't know. They could discover something new, is what people don't realize. We may find out eventually that there's something, you know, look, we think we know everything. We think, not literally, but we think we know. And then one day it's like, oh, hey, wait a minute. We need this kind of mineral. And it's not just this, you know, graphene, for instance. We'll use that as an example. Yeah, what if they just start wanting to mine the carbon? They're like, or, oh, or, now or, dirt or, itself is a mineral we not can just, mine. Not that. What if they discover that there are cer certain carbon deposits that are more, uh, that can easily be converted into graphene for some reason? And now all of a sudden they call it something like graph carbon deposits. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, we didn't realize this 10 years ago when we thought your property was worthless, but now. Fortunately, we have the mineral rights to your property, and we found there's graph carbon deposits. So right. we're coming okay. on in, it's baby. It's yours, and they yep. they can take up to at least in the at least in the West, uh, Nevada, and I, they can take up to forty nine percent of your surface rights to to mine or to extract whatever but, but, subsurface mineral. But with you guys, it was just about a tortoise. Well, yeah. So we're Why? in the, like what? So we're like in the like the desert desert like if there's a, a desert in this maybe the sahara desert is a little bit drier but that's about it i mean we're talking about the mojave desert like no one wanted yeah. to live there in fact uh there was a group of people what are they, that what, came, are, what are they grazing on what are the cattle grazing on? just like there's like shrubs. there's shrubs there's you know some so there and certain times of the year it, it'll rain and there will be grass yeah. um you know they they have to struggle from from yeah. you know and then we have these waters because they're springs so we have waters all around where they can they're just little springs but we capture the water mm. so they have water troughs and they don't have to travel so far but that area was like 150 years ago no one wanted it like yeah. the people that came in before my family they they went back and reported to Brigham Young in Salt Lake and said that the place was uninhabitable <laughs> right and then we went in there a few years later and started you know making a, a life out of it and a living mm -hmm. out of it and then now you know for whatever reason well we know why but uh, they you know now now people want it mm -hmm. and yeah. uh yeah. was well, there like uranium or something under well there? yeah i was going to show you this uh, i don't you know i don't know if you but 
the real reason the real reason is quite obvious of what what they want and when you look at a at a map of the federal control i'll just show you for for the fun of it right mm. you all right with that oh is it is it is it definitely minerals of some sort li uh, lithium well, so this right here is that's a map of of the the red is federal controlled land yeah so you can see the west is like they way, own nevada yeah they they yeah 89 percent. but then but what do they want with the land well this is this is the whole point oh, so let, let's good. look at uh, these are the mercury and gold mines yeah here uh, we go <laughs> it's the same map wow right? right right and 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 like uh here's a uranium exactly yeah, totally. it's the same map called it and that's they're what that's what they want they're 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 controlling the natural resources and they want to make people think that they're doing it to, to preserve just, it why don't they just come up to you guys and be like here's 10 million dollars have a nice day because they didn't think they had to they thought yeah. that they could come in and just take it because they've done it to to hundreds right. and hundreds of other ranchers and and loggers and miners and everything else i West. mean look they just print the money anyway they should just yeah, walk I'm up and be sure like here's that. 10 million bucks yeah carry but on. if they no. do it to us you know then they have to do it to everybody else and they found a better way they they just run you out they well bring apparently in a, not now i mean at the very least they should have uh, they haven't come to you since then and been like okay how much do you want actually uh they they tried that with my dad but they so the 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 constitution which i know they don't follow it and why do they care <laughs> care but but they actually did they tried to get the county to buy my dad's uh, rights and my dad refused he didn't want to sell them right and so and and i'll say this though but they, they probably tried, they can't have him offered a, a, a good enough amount no of money. they offered him seventy five thousand dollars right right <laughs> so which is you know the price of a, a pickup right now so yeah, yeah exactly yeah your family's and, history everything your legacy your your farm it's gone here 75k it's like yeah. but but it was in the attitude well we're going to take it anyway so here this is an easy way out for you and wow. my dad was like absolutely no so what if they came and said two million dollars would you guys pack up no so no, no, no. My my dad has been offered for because he has a lot of water rights, like yeah. actual coming down the river too, and uh, and private private property there, and so he's been offered a decent amount of you know millions of dollars, wow. and he's just not he doesn't want to sell. I mean, for whatever reason, he has his reasons. He's not going to sell. That's has smart. he considered taking like hundreds of thousands of balloons and putting them in his chimney and then flying the house away when <laughs> yeah. they're trying to take your property? I saw a story you know, about that once. It's crazy. It's crazy what what's going on. What happened? What was the resolution? I heard that the ranch, like the story goes, you guys were like, no, we're not giving it. They came on the property. There was a shootout, and then so uh, there wasn't a shootout. But what ultimately what happened? This was during Obama, uh, mm -hmm. 2014, and he thought he had enough political power and a, and he had a basically an internal internal bureaucratic army, and he sent that them down upon my family. Um, it was the uh, FBI, which we didn't know that at first, but FBI, Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service. Um, That's BLM. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. The other BLM. Bureau of Land Before Management. It was cool. yeah. <laughs> and, Before uh, it was cool. And they came down with a 213 federal armed, basically, army and locked the ranch down. Uh, they began to kill the cattle from, from helicopters, burying them Whoa. in mass graves, destroy the water infrastructure, mm -hmm. destroy the uh, krells. And mean, meanwhile, they were threatening that this would be another Waco or Ruby Ridge if we resisted. Yeah. So we it took us a while to gain enough courage to start to like confront them and stand up to them, and people started coming. And so they, then they, they, they killed your animals. Yeah, they killed like 60 head and buried them in mass wow. graves. How? Yeah. With, with a helicopter? Shoot, shooting them with helicopters, yeah. How did they I mean, this the all water? sounds like explicitly illegal. Like well, they're committing crimes. Yeah, yeah but that's they, the definition of government. Yeah, but, oh. they, <laughs> <laughs> but they also claimed, you know, they were saying we were trespassing. That's, yeah, but I don't think, yeah. I, like, if, if someone's cow wandered on my property, I can't kill it. Nah. Yeah, I don't. I mean, like you know, the federal government does what they want to do. Yeah. All right, they, right. They, they do what they want to do. If it was a know. bull, maybe, and like went on my land and like was destroying like, something. Yeah, something like but if there's like a cow, you know, a couple of cow walking by. I think it's no one. No, no one would find it reasonable that you start mowing them down from a helicopter. Yeah, They'd be like, "Yo, dude, what are you doing?" Especially if they're branded. I agree. I mean, no. Look, right now we got the story with Lauren Boebert, where the Democrats accused her of killing a dog. And then, like, you read uh, for 10 seconds into the story, and you're like, oh, the dog broke onto her property and was attacking her goats. Then you read it was actually her other neighbor who killed the dog because the dog had actually attacked a bunch of animals. And Lauren's like, I had nothing to do with this. Talk about defamation, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. seriously. <laughs> but, I mean, in, 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 in that capacity, it's like, 
you know, you've got something attacking your, your animals, you, you protect your property, you protect your animals. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. but that's what not what was going. No, going this is them this just killing just, a bunch of cows. Yeah, they were just killing them, burying them in mass graves, causing mayhem, literally. And then we started. So the interesting thing is, is that they, they set up these areas that they called First Amendment areas. They were like miles away from the ranch. And they were like these construction mesh, you know, the orange construction oh, mesh. Yeah, yeah. Freedom cages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they... And they said that if you're going to protest or demonstrate or anything, our actions, you have to do it in there. That's your First Amendment area. So, of course, we didn't do that. So they started sicking dogs on us and tasing us and throwing us to the ground and doing all this stuff. Well, people were filming it, and they started sending it all over the country. And next thing you know, we got hundreds and then thousands of people coming. You know what this story reminds me of? Avatar. Mm -hmm. You guys know that, that movie? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah where, where the noble... <coughs> True landowners are minding their own business on their big tree, mm -hmm. and the evil government comes in to steal all those minerals beneath that tree, just killing everybody. That's right. Yeah, yeah. James That's Campbell. the story here. The, yeah. only, the, only, the only thing is, it doesn't really work towards their Hollywood narrative because it's a bunch of like white ranchers, I guess, and not Native Americans. Yeah, that's why we weren't so popular, right? Because uh, we mm -hmm. we were just there and evidently colonizers. Yeah. Well, and I, I do say this all the time, like. I know when I was born there, there was no Native Americans other than other ranchers. There was other ranchers that were actually Native Americans that yeah. ranched in there, yeah. ranched there, and they were they were pushed out and driven out just like By the, feds, the rest huh? of us. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's so. another story about the 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 colonial patriarchy government kicking out you know the honest worker, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah it's not so. it's not a racist system. It's just hungry for money and yeah. resources. Power. And there there's this um like unholy alliance between those who want to control the resources make money and all of that build their bureaucracies all that power stuff that we know about and these globalist uh, environmentalists the green religion and they've like locked arms in basically coming and trying to control and drive mankind off off the land that's Oh, that's very uh, telling, and, and I think that correlates with what you're saying about going after the saying it's for the tortoise. Yeah, that's exactly that's that's, that's why. So you've got, you know, this the global environmentalists that are like saying we got to save the tortoise, which it's all based upon lies, uh, and then you have the those who want to control the the resources, the the subsurface mineral rights and the land and so forth, saying like, well, come come with us and we'll will stop people from using this and then then they take it for themselves and that's that's what's been happening all over the west is it like a tortoise haven or something you guys got a lot of them well i mean there's there's a lot of there's a decent amount of desert tortoise down there but the thing thing of it is is the studies actually the true studies actually showed that when there's cattle there there was more desert tortoise because the their main staple was manure right they actually ate the Turtles the, ate the whole Oh yeah, they dig through it. Yeah, the the cow pies, the big they'd go in it and they would dig it and they they would thrive off of it. So mm -hmm. when you had more cattle, uh, you had more desert tortoise. But they didn't I, care about that. They I, didn't care no, about no, that. No, no, I was no. gonna say that because um, it seems to me that cattle coming in, it's going to create it's going to expand the ecosystem. That the manure is gonna result in more growth, it's gonna it's gonna deposit you know, minerals or whatever. And then just result in a in a more robust ecosystem, albeit still small and desert like. But but well, but, but Tim, Tim, I just want to I just want to uh, uh, talk about this fact here. The U.S. government literally tested 1,032 nuclear weapons on American soil. This is a government that does not care about <laughs> any kind of natural environment or anything. The, the U.S. military industrial complex, the U.S. war machine, is one of the biggest polluters by definition. Right. And and of course that's just being uh, and no, pushed and around. In hold, Nevada, on, hold on, by the way. But right why? Did, why? Why did they test those nuclear weapons? To protect the tortoise. Because right. yeah, they knew that Vladimir Putin, <laughs> that and, you know, Khrushchev and Lenin and all those guys going way back, what they were really after, the Soviets, killing tortoise. tortoise. They, needed to, tortoise. Nuke, they tortoise. needed to nuke the tortoise to save the tortoise. <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple. The, the Gotta blow them up. Yeah, yeah. The federal, Too many of them. The, in my opinion, the federal government owns 28% of all land in the United States. That is 28% too much, in my own personal opinion. <laughs> and those free speech zones are absolutely absurd. And I think they were ruled unconstitutional. They were originally started by George W. Bush when he was trying to stop protest against his regime mm -hmm. and, and his larger anti-war protests that, of course, people were protesting against. And they just were like, well, you can't really 
protest, but you can in our little regulated areas where, of course, you don't have any speech at all. You're just mm -hmm. you're just cattle yourself, which is absolutely crazy. So yeah, with the, the people launching nuclear bombs on American soil, I'm not going to be lectured about how they need to be there to save the environment. That's that's let's, bunk. That's bullcrap. We'll, we'll come back to a little bit of this. Bit. All right, let's read some more. Johnny Generic says federal government owns a huge amount of land in the West. I covered this in my blog blog spot, Johnny Generic. And uh, we, we didn't pull it up, but it was on uh, Ammon's computer. He showed it. it's crazy. All right. Jackson says the land is hard, rocky, scrubby, and arid. Good for little else than cattle grazing. The tortoises would enjoy the company. Down with BLM, both will do nicely. Uh -huh. <laughs> to that. That's a good yeah, one. Amen Amen to that. All right. Brave New Clown World says Ammon Bundy is described as an American anti-government militant on Wikipedia. <laughs> That's a title I think we all strive for. Wow. <laughs> uh, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's that that's accurate. No, it's not accurate. It's it's it, you know Wikipedia always just takes the most extreme version of whatever they can paint you as. Always yeah. anti-government you know. people don't. So Roger Stone run is for all government. about. Sorry, I, Roger Stone's all about like never defending yourself. You know, just always going on the offense. So mm -hmm. yeah, like, just I'm a, not going to defend that title. You're like whatever, I'll take it. But uh, it's it's not accurate. Dee Dee Mega Doo says the Bundy story was one of the first stories that red pilled me and was a flagrant example of government corruption. I wish you luck in your race. Reach out to Jason Seiler of The Simple Truth, who moved there recently. I recently went to Waco. I went to the uh, the Branch Davidian compound, got to uh, look at the, uh, you know, read, read the history of it. They have a bunch of stuff there you can check out. And when you when you read about this stuff, you go, you just, they do, the government does dirty things. Yeah. And like, look, if there were criminals who could get away with committing a crime, they would. And so when there are people in government who commit crimes, they will get away with it. And who's going? To, there's no cops for the cops. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to commit a crime, just become a politician. And I really wanted to ask you, you know, what did you learn about government infiltration from your experiences? Like at the Bunny Ranch? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, we, we actually did not find out that the FBI was even in, involved at the ranch uh, and until our trial two years well it was almost four years later when we're in trial and we start to run into this like this discovery and we started doing cross-examination with the government witnesses and we find out that the fbi was actually pushing and and in control of this whole thing and that the they tried to scrub that they were even invo involved at all and we ended up discovering that they were hiding over 3,800 files, not documents, files wow. of ex, uh, exculpatory evidence. And we just blew it all up. Like it was the FBI that was behind all of this. And it was the HRT team, the same team that went into Waco, the same team that went into Ruby Ridge, the same team that killed my friend Lavoy Finicum. Mm -hmm. And it was that same group of government agents that were pushing all the buttons at the Bundy Ranch. Was there any agent provocateurs? Uh, absolutely they were they had what they called the first amendment team where they actually went down among the people and were trying to create dissent mm -hmm. trying to you know uh, provoke the people uh there was all of that was going on so yeah i mean i could go you know i could go on and on with that but yeah and they actually had hired uh former cia agents to come in and to like for alias to run their alias social media accounts and all of that to try to get the people to basically turn against us because they they felt like if they could t get the people to turn against us and that then it, they would justify the violence that they were about ready to use upon my family yeah i think so. they were using the bundy name because i thought of ted bundy and, and, and I thought of like Ruby Ridge and like Waco. Those are the things that were going through my mind whenever I heard about the Bundy Ranch. Right. And they weren't not, like making it, they weren't clearing it up for me. Nothing yeah. was being cleared up for me. Yep. All of that was going on at the little Bundy Ranch in the middle of the desert. But I want to jump to this uh, political story here. We have a tweet from Eric Swalwell. And this might be one of the funniest bits I've ever seen. This it's makes Saturday, Saturday Night Live look like, you know, amateur improv hour at a local, co a local college comedy club. MAGA Republicans want women arrested for having an abortion. This is what that looks like. All right, let's play the video. It's got 2.5 million views as of, as of 24 hours ago. I hope you guys are ready to enjoy this. Oh, wait, I got to fix the audio. I always do that because before the show, we switch the output. Yeah. All right, there it is. There it is. Oh, no, 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 no. 
nom nom nom. You're nom. weird. He is weird. But cute. Oh. Gross. <laughs> Mary Anderson? Yes? I have a warrant for your arrest. Arrest for what? Penal code 243 violation. Unlawful termination of a pregnancy. <gasps> you gotta be kidding me. That That is my personal business. That's for the courts to decide, ma'am. Your medical records have been subpoenaed and Dr. Landry's already in custody. No, my, my God, you, you, you can't just- You will have to submit to a physical examination. <laughs> What? Why? Who? No, no, no one's touching oh, me. Get that! Oh, yeah, <laughs> turn around. Oh my God. Put oh your my hands God. behind your back. Now. Why is this happening? Love you, honey bear. The acting, wow. We're just enforcing the law here. <laughs> Elections have consequences. <laughs> Vote Democrat on November 8th. Stop Republicans from criminalizing abortion everywhere. Oh, there's more. Protect women's rights and freedom. Please don't do this. Please. Eric Swalwell. You know what I love? Like in the beginning, when he's doing like near the baby's mouth, and then the, the the wife is like, he's cute, and the kid's like, she's gross. I was thinking like. The reason why they can't get the acting right on what a family looks like is because these people don't have families. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just like, I think this is what it looks like. <laughs> I also want to point out that the first reply you can see is from Adrienne Curry. Shout out. People cannot afford food, gas, or even their own homes. And this is your strategy? LOL. No, seriously, like the production value is so bad. Yo, the cops, if they ever did show, would be like, man, we have a, we have a, a warrant for your arrests. Come with me. They wouldn't be like, you're going to get a medical exam. We've arrested your doctor. They wouldn't say any of those things. No, They'd say no, you have a right no. to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be used against you in a court of law. Yeah. Please place your hands behind your back. And that would be it. And everyone would, the, the husband would be like, oh, what's going on? And then she'd get arrested. That's about it. Would you be arresting people? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I look at it like, okay, there's a little baby right there uh, eating. Uh, and what if, they, what if they decided they were going to kill that little baby? then wouldn't it be just Well, that's her personal business. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess that between them two, right? Like, you know, but that that to me, that's how I I view it. And mm -hmm. you know, the more I look into abortion and the more I look into really what it is, uh it is murdering babies. That's what it is. And so uh yeah, it should be uh it should be enforced. Do you think from the point of conception at any point abortion should be made illegal penalty prison? I do believe, I believe that life begins at conception. I believe that that is the correct uh, point in which you would, you, you would de protect determine life. it a life and then that the state's job is to protect it. Should the mother go to prison as well as the doctor like in this video from Eric Swalwell? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a sad, unfortunate thing and it's going to be very difficult to try to get like society to switch their minds on this, that, that it's not okay to kill a baby. Hmm. Um, and it's going to be hard. Uh, I think we've got to be a somewhat, uh, you know, I hate saying this, but you know, there's a transition that you have to, you have to go through, but it is not okay to kill babies. I mean, if you like the contrast of this, uh, I guess, cause this really isn't that great a production, but just go and watch. I mean, it, it's terrible to watch, but just go watch a video of an abortion. You, I know what you need to do. You need to make your own version of this, but like the mom has like a mustache, she's twirling, like, I'm going to kill this baby. <laughs> and then the, the husband's like, yes. Uh, so, but no, I mean, if, if that's the case, um, a, a lot of conservatives say they would never go as far as arresting the mother for this. It's the provider who kills the baby who would be punished, not the mother. But you're yeah. saying you, you think the mother is involved. Is, is well, I mean, if... If justice was to be served, it's those who had the intent to kill. Mm -hmm. What about exceptions? Do you think there, sh there should be exceptions? So I think conception should be termed, because there is the, where you have, um, where the baby gets, or the, the uh, gets in the, uh, excuse me, I, I'm trying to get in the um, Philippian tube. And that, that topic pregnancies. Yeah, there you go. That's the term. Uh, and that will kill a mother. Uh, but though, I think those are considered non-viable as it is. And so those aren't, at least for a long time, they, that wasn't considered an abortion. And then in, in vitro is another thing. Like, you know, because they're actually taking 
the the sperm and the egg out and they're uh fertilizing it if you will and then they're putting it there and so some people are like well that's conception is too so i think yeah. that it needs to be deter or as part of the definition must be that it's in the womb hmm. there there's challenges here because i understand what you're saying and uh, I lean more on the traditional pro-choice side. The issue I take with it, I also view as a libertarian perspective in that it, there are circumstances, th there's challenges here, I'll admit, so I'll, let, me, let me walk through this. There are circumstances where if a woman does have a legitimate risk or problem with the pregnancy, how do you get through that effectively? Does the state have to get involved and issue a permit to allow it to happen? I mean, these things can become overwhelmingly complicated. And then what, what is an actual health matter for the mother is now an issue of the state and certification or permitting and stuff like that. I, 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 have, a, I have a hard, I have an issue with that. Well, so, I, but, I do understand though, just to, just to walk through this, I think abortion is wrong. I think too many women today are using it as contraception. I think the mainstream left, the modern left is pro-abortion. And that makes, there's, there's, there's no... There's no middle ground for you know how we actually deal with an extremely complicated and let's let's be real there's there's there is no middle ground. I mean, you either are going to create a circumstance where women will get elective abortions as birth control, even though we think it's wrong, or you'll penalize the woman or arrest the doctor or the woman. So th and that's why, you know, I intend on declaring life begins at conception, and making that the point because ultimately it's it's a, a determination of when life begins because then you have to say well then it's not okay to take the life right i mean if life begins at this point then it's not okay to take the life is it you know we all agree that after the baby is born it's not okay to take their life right mm -hmm. well I don't believe that that's when life begins. I believe that it begins at conception, and so right. therefore the state's job is to protect that life. Oh. And uh, and ultimately, when it comes down to like a court proceeding or, or a trial or a prosecution, it comes down to intent. What about in the case of rape? So I actually, I'll, I'll admit to you that I did at one time believe that that should be an exception. Uh, but I do not believe that there is a right way to take a life. Mm -hmm. I, I hear what you're saying, I, and I, I understand the moral position. The challenge I have in this circumstance, let me pause first, because you know, people get, content, get heated on this one. Um, uh, well, let me just say- We'll get through this. We'll, we'll get through we'll it. Get, we'll get through it. <laughs> a woman who through no fault of her own is raped and forced into carrying a baby. She did not, she was completely responsible in every right and was victimized. I don't see how the state can determine that you have to provide your body to another living person. Now, I, I do understand this is the, it is extremely rare that this is the case in terms of abortion. This is the problem I have. 90, was it 92% of abortion is elective or no, no reason given, just, just contraception, yeah. con contraceptive abortions? Non medical. That, that, that's, that to me is insane. Mm -hmm. But the issue I run into is the government being like, now I know. You were victimized, but we, the state, have determined your body and blood now must be shared with another person. So this is the reality of it, though. Um, the reality of it is, is those who get an abortion suffer more emotionally and many other ways because they got an abortion versus those who actually keep the baby. Uh, they may turn it, they may give it up for adoption, whatever, but but they are, I mean, it, they are healed more by having going through that pregnancy and having that baby it's it's difficult yeah but that's that's, that's not a, that's that's not a legal more uh, or, or moral argument i mean that that i can't understand I, I can't understand that argument i mean if there's a woman who says you will not the government will not force me to carry my rapist's child like you might think she'd be better off but, but if she's saying if, she, if she's going to kill herself again, again it's, I, I know it's the, the right too. of the it's right of the, that <clears throat> child to to live that's that's where that's where that's where it becomes it's difficult right because we're talking about a life here you that's know why we're saying like, that there's no middle. just because of the circumstance that you were you know if you you were uh created if you will uh now because of that circumstance we're going to take your life and mm -hmm. that i just don't i don't agree with that i think that the the better way is to to side with life that's where i that's where i end up
Seamus uh, uh, Coglin of Freedom Tunes made the point. I believe it. This was the point you made, Seamus. So if if I'm wrong, uh, uh, forgive me. But uh, he said the detriment to the female in this scenario is less than the detriment to taking the life. Yeah. So so his his point was basically, yeah, you know, you know what, this woman might now have to suffer for an, for another nine months, but suffering for nine months is not nearly as bad as killing determining the life of, a, of another being I, I i still run into this i don't like government and i and i don't like that yeah. idea but I, but i certainly understand uh, believe me i'm i'm right there with you and i it's tough huh but man when you when you watch which is terrible i've never been able to watch a video to the end with it oh, when it comes yeah, to no. abortion i, I right. can't i can't um well this is and, one, and so then then that's what changed my mind that's a, what that's what changed my mind. If a woman has a miscarriage, should there be? You think there should be an investigation? No, that's a natural thing that happens. But what if she like jumps on the ground and kills the baby because and then calls it a miscarriage? If there was intent, that's what all crimes are based upon intent. Like like if you intentionally tried to kill the baby, you know, then then the state would probably have some jurisdiction there. But, but you know, so like how yeah. would they know unless they investigate? Yeah, that, it, but it's just like any other crime. How do you know yeah. unless you investigate? I mean, and they often like, just don't investigate. We're just not. We're not talking about, talking about like talking about precedent. We're not talking about uh, creating a, an entire system with all these exceptions and everything. We're talking about we already have murder laws. We already have these laws, and they're based upon intent, and basically saying that life begins at conception, and so the state's duty is to protect that life. Well, not all life. You kill mosquitoes, um, but you're talking about yeah, humans, humans yeah. or people persons um and the argument is living tissue isn't necessarily a person so yeah. like a sperm isn't a person an egg isn't a person a sperm egg combo isn't necessarily a person until i in my opinion until it's thinking and has feelings and emotions and has a a sense of self um other than that it's just like growing tissue yeah, yeah but with that i agree i agree uh that's the argument of like when life begins right um but i mean i i you know i've had i have six children and a newborn you know, is not very aware of themselves. Not not uh, when life begins. Life begins. L sperm is alive. Eggs are alive. It's always living stuff. But whether or not it's a person, whether or not it's murder, yeah. depends on if it's a person. Because if you kill a cow, you're not murdering it. Well, at conception conception is where you know the the sperm and the egg come together and they begin to grow as a as a as one, if you will. And I believe that that's when life begins. As far as I mean, I get I I. I get, but I don't want to get into semantics, you know. Yeah, well, well, I, think it's, um, I think life begins. It's already, it's always living. You're, well, your right, sperm right, is right, living. Right. Like, but it's not about yeah, killing life. I, I don't think I, that's I the argument. I just want to say, you know, personally, I, I'm I'm pro life, but I'm extremely skeptical of giving police officers more reasons to arrest people. How would you <laughs> handle it as 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 a governor? What would be a punishment? Like, what would you do to to a woman? Well, we already have murder laws. Right. You know. So we but that's have the but laws. But that's life. That's that's a life sentence. No, no, not always. No, predominantly depending I mean, you, on the severity of the of the charge the degree there's there's third degree i think there's even fourth degree in some states right and so. and the laws you know the laws are there for a, as a as a deterrent right i mean you know uh there that's really what they're there for they're they're a deterrent and yeah. so uh this would be a deterrent for people uh, so taking the taking problem money. is if you don't enforce laws, no one takes them seriously, and it wouldn't just be a deterrent if you're enforcing. Well, it. I think there's a, there's actually a much simpler uh, breakdown of what happens. The end result is a, a abortion clinics just cease to exist. The the a, 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 overall the amount of abortions that happen will drop to a ridiculous ridiculously low amount. They'll still happen. The state probably won't be arresting and prosecuting doctors because they'll be done in secret. And there's a lot of problems with that the left brings up. But in reality, as much as the left wants to create the scenario where like uh, the police show up and they're like, your doctor's been arrested, that probably will never happen. Extremely rare. Something that people need to understand is that people can go online and admit to committing serious crimes and post the evidence and the government still doesn't go after them. The reality to this life, to this country is that they do not want you in jail. They, I mean, first of all, we all know what's going on with the woke left in these big cities, releasing people like crazy. Yeah. But there's overcrowding. The courts don't want to deal with it. I can't, I can't, look, I once got arrested for skateboarding and the judge was pissed. I show up for court and he, and he puts his glasses on. He looks at it and he's like, what? He's like, come on, my docket's full already and you get out of my courtroom. <laughs> so uh, what, what really happens with these laws is 
my my prediction on if they actually did criminalize abortion nationwide as as like a murder charge planned parenthood clinics would just cease to exist and it would not be that big of an issue but you'd see miscarriages spike well i think you, I, also, I don't i don't think so see lots i really don't think so oh yeah i think i think, the, the, I think babies keep dying change. man the whole that's culture's the gonna shift everyone's gonna stop having sex like it's not a big deal it's gonna be a very very different thing from the ground up and just make one law and that'll change right entire, i think people will realize that you can't change, change that it, yeah. it will have a I'm massive joking, impact yeah. i mean look at uh th there are questions about when uh what can make culture shift for one the entirety of this this country just all of a sudden decided that the the marijuana laws didn't matter and people were just going about breaking the law and making movies yeah. about how funny it was so i'm not convinced outright the culture would change but planned parenthood and abortion clinics would cease to exist overnight if there was a nationwide ban yeah. and yeah. of course many of the left and pro-choice they freak out about that idea that's a reality there will still be there it's not going to be back alleys with coat hangers it's going to be private underground facilities it'll be chemicals they'll mail Probably, stuff yep. in the, the people right. will send stuff in the mail little pills you take it there's no trace of it there's and gonna the, be a huge spike in miscarriages no there's people, not are they just gonna pretend like they're not doing secret abortions when they're having and, and miscarriages? Ian, what, you, what you misunderstand I mean, is come on a spike in miscarriages requires the women to report the miscarriages are happening yeah so if you Unreported mean stuff so if you mean women so miscarriages won't spike because women will be inducing abortion and not telling anybody so abortions will go down some abortions will remain miscarriages won't because women are not going to report their 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 illegal yeah, abortions but how is that stopping the ethics of killing the baby well, that doesn't you, change things. one is the state's not paying for it and two is there is a law there in in place it, it is it's a moral thing as it as stops well. elective abortion yeah. i yeah, mean exactly. it, it it stops the overwhelming majority of elective abortions uh, Th I mean, that, that's just that's, a lot of that uh, stuff is safer than taking pills and killing the okay but hold, hold, hold on look 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 you're getting me to argue for him now <laughs> <laughs> to say like that this. you don't think abortions would or that miscarriages would spike is like i mean think okay let me let me let, let me let me let me walk you through this again a woman who has an indu who induces an abortion illegally would not report it right I don't know. I don't know how that so works. So she would go to the know. cops and be like, I broke the law, arrest me? Well, is it known that she's pregnant? Do her neighbors know? They're like, you know, she was pregnant a week ago. How would they know I, if, whisper, if she's with Whisper, whisper. If you're, and then the government's like, we'll pay. You okay, know, you're making they, up scenarios. Also, also, this, also guys, man. it's important to note here, Dave Portnoy is going to be really pissed if this goes through. <laughs> and then <laughs> oh, no, yeah. number two, he's like, what? you know, a lot of people will go to Canada and to Mexico, like already a lot of Mexicans, like a lot of Americans are already going for, for their health care as well. Okay. So that's another component. So the that. interesting thing is, is on the other side of this, I want to completely de deregulate the, the medical uh, industry yeah, uh, interesting and uh, but why is abortion different because it's life and if there was one thing that the state is supposed to do it is supposed to protect life and so I'm you know I, I lean very heavily on the libertarian side absolutely so the, this is, uh, this but is not a, with abortion i think there's an argument uh ben shapiro has made as well that if if if, gov if if you're libertarian and you believe in very limited government there is one thing that most people believe government should do and it's protect life that's right but then it's the war machine like it's the killer government's main job is to protect life but it's also to kill and to make murder legal so that they can well, kill no, that's not something libertarians agree with uh, my, my point is making is the that government's function libertarians are like the government should protect life not not be actively taking it and most libertarians i think the overwhelming majority are anti-war and don't want the u.s involved in the killing and in, in, in industrial military Which, industrial complex i'm raising my hand for yeah. that i mean absolutely yeah. So, like, if the government's going to protect the life of a baby by destroying the life of a mother, I just don't see the, the well, protection you know, racket. Hold on, like, hold on. You, we we got we to stop right there. The, the point that I brought up, that, she, the, 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 that I reiterated for Seamus is, the mother will live and the baby will live, or the baby dies and the mother will live. You, mm -hmm. you, see, you see the issue? Yeah, you're talking about, like, no abortion versus abortion? Right. In an abortion, someone dies, someone lives. With no abortion, the mother suffers for a, 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 an extended period assuming the mother is suffering and then the baby is born but both live that's that's the moral argument that seamus made to me i'm not saying i, I agree yeah, with i this think stuff. the idea I that more life is better is kind of erroneous too because it's quality of life is super important yeah i guess so yeah but, but you don't take life just because you're not going to have good quality that's that's not justification mm -hmm. to take i'll life. just i'll just shout out seamus again he made a cartoon where there's a poor kid sitting on his bed and he's like malnourished and everything's grainy and gross and democrat man shows up and then he's like, help Democrat man, I'm hungry and poor. And he goes, I'll save you. And then disappears and then reappears instantly. And then he goes, what, what did you do? And he went, he goes, I went back 12 years to convince your mother to get an abortion. And then the kid goes, what? No. And then just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
It's an interesting point Seamus makes when, when look, we hear a lot of really stupid arguments from the left as to why abortion should be allowed. Like kids are poor. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure if you go to a poor kid and say you should be dead, they're going to be like, no, thank you. Yeah. But I think there are real challenges here. And mine mainly stems from the government mandating someone's body be shared with another person because I don't see a moral way to resolve that. I understand the point Seamus made that I brought up several times. So in, in, in without running in circles again, Let's jump to the next story because this is not something we can good, solve. Good conversation. Yeah, but it's good. good, and, good and, yeah. and it is really yeah. difficult. Well, let's just uh, jump into this first story. Check it out from Yahoo. George Floyd's daughter announces $250 million lawsuit against Kanye West. And then it says, the mother of George Floyd's daughter announced they are filing a $250 million lawsuit against Kanye West over his recent statements about Floyd's death. The rapper. We want. So, Tim, is it all right if I just set this one out? I don't really want to be sued here. Okay. Is that okay? No, All right. I'm, right, I'm right, totally right. joking. Now, <laughs> I mean, but, look, the mother of George Floyd's daughter. I don't. What, what's that all about? <laughs> like, like, I, well, I I'm guess confused here. Th there's no wor baby mama. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, or it's like, gotta be something like. There'll that. be George Floyd's baby mama. Is that? Is that? I'm, I'm trying to make sure. Not I get his it right. girlfriend though. They weren't right. official. No, like baby mama, meaning like someone you had a kid with. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. So, so the appropriate term would be baby mama. Yeah, I think that's that. I think you're right. Okay. Anyway, I was just kidding about st setting this one out. But, well, you, know, you don't want to get sued. We, we could get all get sued by, you know, what we say here today. You know, because if this is, I'm not, I, I don't care. I, I'm actually being sued right now by uh, St. Luke's for defamation. No St. way. St. Luke's Hospital. Yeah, wow, so, no way. Uh, because I stood for a family where they were involved in taking their child oh, uh, okay. through a CPS case. And I I rallied a bunch of people and, and we, got the, we got the child back to wow. his parents. And then later, uh, St. Luke sued me. Oh wow! For defamation. So look, I mean, it was not. It's not. It's not quarter million or quarter billion dollars. But hey, quarter million. Yeah, I mean, you, is that what it was? Quarter yeah, two hundred fifty okay. million. Oh yeah. Alex Jones. They. You, you saw that story, right? Nine hundred and sixty-five yeah. million yeah. dollars. Yeah. That's the meme now. Like whenever someone's caught lying, you just say like, "I demand nine hundred and sixty-five million dollars." <laughs> now, a lot of people need to understand, like. He wasn't just ordered by the judge to pay 965 million. It was like 50 million for this family, 60 million for this family, 40 million for this family. And I'm like, where do those numbers come from? You know, is like, what, what's, what's the true cost of, you know, let's, let's say everything they accuse Alex Jones of doing is like true and legit. Like, how do you get the $40 million? And for that matter, Kanye West goes on some podcast and he goes, I watched a documentary by Candace Owens and it said, this is what really happened. And now he's got $250 million. Yeah, I don't Come know on, where. man. I don't know where. You know, fine. Set the precedent. Cause I got a bunch of lawsuits I could file against all the fake news. Yeah. And you know what? If they want to play this game, each and every one of you can sue all of the fake news outlets for every lie they put out. Yeah, let's do it. So is this, because in defam defamation cases, uh, th there has to be some way to prove that there was uh, like a, a loss of income or mm -hmm. something to that element. Damages. I mean, what are, what are, what are they claiming? Like, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe this is just uh, a PR thing. It's going to get them a bunch of attention. Yeah. They're going to get the, it's a virtue signal. It's going to get them the, the, we're the good guys fighting back against, you know, crazy Kanye or whatever. Or they hope that he has a, a bunch of money. He'll just settle with them. They'll get a few hundred thousand dollars or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, you know. Yeah, maybe. But, but I also kind of think Kanye's the kind of guy who's going to be like, he's going to go to a lawyer and just be like, here's a million dollars. Have fun. Yeah. You know, when you're a billionaire like that, you don't really got to think twice about it. I don't know, though. Actually, there's an interesting strategy in defamation. Like, you know, Luke, if you were to call out any one of those people who went to Epstein Island, and you say as a statement of fact, they did a thing, they might be able to sue you. And you can say, oh no, I'm being sued. Time to go to discovery. Show me all the communications you've had with Epstein, everything you've done, done on the island. And mm. you could potentially open it up to be like, okay, right. let's see what you got. And then you get them under oath in front of a lawyer and you can ask them the question directly. Yeah. So strategic lawfare, I guess. I, I, you know, I think there's, there's, there's pros and there's cons. If you have the time and the money, though, to deal, deal with it, you know, because you, right. you get sucked into the courts and they just drag it on for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're paying an attorney. You yeah. have to go to the hearings. It's just, you know, and I, someone, someone like Wes doesn't matter. You know, he's, he has an attorney does it, do it. But if they're going after, you know, people who don't have the funds and, or the means to be able to defend themselves, it becomes quite a problem. Oh, you just lose instantly. Yeah, yeah people really, you, need, you really need to understand this. I mean, if so, it, it, you, you can be just outright shut down 
If yeah. you get sued and you can't afford a defense, like what do you even do? So now you have to have an attorney to uh, for free speech, right? To be able to speak how you want to speak, you have to have an attorney there backing you up and a couple hundred thousand dollars to defend yourself. Yep. Money talks. Yeah. For-profit lawfare. I think that's a problem. Yeah. Sean says, Ye is the next target of the Alex Jones precedent. The left and Dems have weaponized the court's system to silence dissent. This will never be used against them. Only the right will suffer from this. Hmm. Sounds about right. Well, there's one simple uh, solution. Just do and say whatever the left tells you and you don't have to worry about it, right? Just bend the knee and be subservient. And uh, what have you got to lose after that? Apparently nothing because you'll owe nothing, but you'll be happy. So they say. Whatever they say is happy. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Unashamed Truth says, I want to know, Ammon, how can Idahoans save Idaho? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. Yeah, it kind of is. Tough, huh? Yeah. I, I want to put in that issue, too. As someone that grew up in Ada County for a long period of my life, it's important for me. So I'd love it, to hear your answer. Is it true there's lots of potatoes in Idaho? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is true. Uh, there's lots like of potatoes. other crops, too. Agriculture is the number one industry yeah, in Idaho. for sure, by far. Uh, which is awesome. But is, is, is it just a stereotype from the commercials, Idaho? Mostly, yeah. yeah. I mean... We definitely produce a lot of potatoes, but we're not the number one producer. I no. don't even think in the <gasps> no. United States. So no. uh, probably we, California. We right? do a lot of wheat. I don't know who is, but I, I heard that the other day. So uh, I don't know how true that is. But the thing that's funny is we don't even we don't even eat all the potatoes that we grow in Idaho. They're most of them are shipped out, so all the potatoes we get in Idaho are not from Idaho in the first place. Yeah, I grew I grew potatoes in my garden this oh, year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like, turned out. And we grow a lot of corn, a lot of wheat. Mm -hmm. um, so back to the question. Um, well. Uh, we've, we've kind of addressed the federal land issues that we have, federal land control, right? Mm -hmm. And we can't even pay our own bills unless we get that straightened out. But, but really, it comes down to the left again, invading Idaho, like com coming in, completely changing our culture, changing our laws, right. all of that. That's what they're trying to do in Idaho. That's what they are doing. They're yeah. actually being successful at it. Yeah, and so, of. you know, I, if there was one thing that I think would get the liberals to leave— is end the welfare, hmm. end no, the welfare no, no. in Idaho. Uh, they'll be going to these other states and and uh, you know getting on welfare there rather than coming here because we know what is happening. They're coming here, getting on welfare, and then they're like almost full time active in trying to turn our state upside down. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but. All right. So that's one oh, thing. Looks like Idaho is the leading potato producer. Yeah, so oh, there you go. 2021 from Statista.com, oh, followed by Washington and Wisconsin. Okay. Mm, All sense. right. Well, William, now I know. William Tresh <laughs> says, I'm a corporate attorney. Generally, compensatory damages are not taxed as income, but psychological, emotional, defamation, and similar damages are. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. Yep. Yeah, how's your how's your race going particularly like who are you running against what's the biggest difference between you and your competitor so i'm i'm running against the republican incumbent um brad little and uh, he's you know the the establishment guy there the deep state um if you will and uh, kind of a rhino yeah he's absolutely a rhino yeah. uh you know idaho was the we we look at idaho and i think the rest of the country looks at idaho and says Hey, you know, they're really conservative. They're kind of, uh, you know, more far right. Yeah. Uh, however, Idaho was the first state to arrest pastors for having church outside during right. COVID. Wow. wow. And we were, we, we were the first state to arrest a mother for going, taking her kids to the park. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it was all done under Governor Little's uh, lockdown orders. And so, you know, I mean, the difference is, you know, completely different. I don't believe the way he believes. I don't believe mm -hmm. that that's the purpose of government. Yeah. I believe the purpose of government is to protect people's rights, not to infringe upon them. And uh, and this uh, is this is Idaho. Yeah, this is Idaho. You got people in Oregon who want to leave Oregon and join Idaho. Yeah, they're they're you know the the, up the, the highways are clear full of people coming into Idaho. It's the fastest yeah. growing state. Yeah. Oh yeah, in, yeah, in, but, in the country. Yeah, but you know who it is. Tell yeah. me. Well, we're hearing a lot that wealthy people are buying up oh, these, yeah. these wealthy, you know, ranches and estates. Yep. Yeah, that's the prices that's, are insane. Like, that's I, happening. I, I think too. they're called Californians. Yeah, Californians. Uh, um, and yeah. I think there's also a lot of elitists buying like doomsday properties yeah. and, and farming yeah, properties. Absolutely. And there's also one guy who loves to, you know, force down fake meat down everyone's throat. Who's also buying up a lot of property everywhere else. Who? who? What's his name? Yeah, it starts with a B. Friend of yours. Like uh, <laughs> Friend of yours. <laughs> it's, it's like he. It's like you know. 
he, he represents closing of, of like something. closing of gates or something, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know who that is? So can we not say that then on this show? No, though? it's Bill. Oh, Gates. Bill Gates is a scumbag. Full disclosure: Is he? I don't know him. I'm going to stop insulting people's uh, person and start insulting the things they do. Yeah, there you go. Because I have a feeling I'm going to meet these people one day. You know, when Bill Gates was being interviewed about being on Epstein's plane, and then just went, "Well, he's dead now, anyway." Yeah, I was like, "Wow, what a bad guy!" Kind of, you know, someone lost their life here. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Bill, come on. You were your friend, Bill. I mean, you were saying they were friends. They were (laughs) very close to the point where he even divorced his wife because of their close friendship together. (laughs) You were saying, dude. (laughs) You were mentioning that was your buddy, man. That was your best friend. And if someone's going to treat their best friend like that, imagine how they're going to treat you. I just want to point out real quick that uh, we. the story about how bill gates has organ- organizations that track mentions of him uh, you know in media so there you go bill anyway you were saying <laughs> what's up billy what's up, um, you were mentioning earlier a difference between conservatives and republicans yeah especially in idaho do you find that as conservatives that people tend more toward libertarianism but that they don't don't adopt the libertarian party because it's too small or something uh i don't think that it's too small i think the issue ultimately is is kind of on abortion like yeah. like they won't go to the libertarian side because of abortion and also because of kind of law enforcement really Mm -hmm. like they just love law enforcement no matter what they do um and this is be the this would be the establishment and the conservatives like uh but people are waking up that there's good law enforcement there's bad uh and that uh and it can be very dangerous and so I would say if there was two issues, it would be that it would be, you know, libertarian view on 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 abortion, and then also just law enforcement and their role and and who they are and what they do. I think if the government was had been out of the way for the last thirty years when it comes to energy, meaning stop subsidizing, stop regulating, stop controlling, yeah. that we would have already found a much better way mm-hmm. to create energy. But because of the government's regulations, controls, I mean. Nuclear nuclear energy is is about as efficient as you're going to get uh, as far as what we have developed in, mm-hmm. in in technology today, but the governments won't let us use it on the scale that we should be using it. Um, Too many it's people, dangerous, right? So, but if the government was out of the way and there, there was deregulation, if you will, and I know that's a scary word for a lot of people, and they were not subsidizing, I believe we would have a lot of answers already when it comes mm-hmm. to energy. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's intentionally controlling the the output, the valve, because they don't want too many people. Yeah, bingo. Mm-hmm. You you if if nuclear energy was the norm, the energy return is higher than petroleum. So you you look at that map, another map, the chart showing population and then petroleum skyrockets within the span of like one generation. It's, it's insane. Mm. We went from having around five hundred million people on this planet for hundreds of years to billions, and it's because of technology the machinery for plants uh, make you know for, for farming as well as the easy access easy access of energy yeah. we upgrade from petroleum to nuclear which is an even mm-hmm. better return and it's going to be another exponential massive increase and i'm all for it mm-hmm. just build spaceships and let's go send those spaceships out you know put a bunch of people on them and bye-bye i think in Colonize idaho we're like a, every person and don't quote me on this but I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm pretty close every person in idaho can have like 22 acres to themselves so, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, you know, what, you know, not that we want that yeah. that people yeah. to come to Idaho, but yeah, please don't. Uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> please don't. You know, and Nevada's even Nevada is like eighty eight acres or something like that. Uh, well, the interesting thing is we're we're terraforming Vegas yeah. because here's how it works: Vegas is a desert. People fly there, and when those planes come, it brings water and human waste from other cities, and then people land and they, you know take their dumps and their beeps in Vegas, all of that stays there. So we're bringing massive amounts of moisture in our own waste. Mm, fertilizer. Not, right, mm. I don't know about human fertilizer, I don't think yeah, they've, they've yeah, met, yeah. But, but it is creating, it is bringing moisture. Then also when they ship food in to feed all these people, that creates more moisture. So now I was reading how there's clouds and there's grass growing. They brought in grass for houses because people like it. That's retaining moisture. We're, we're basically, it's a man-made, t- man-made terraforming of, of uh, the desert. Yeah, like Arizona. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Lake Meads, it's drying up quick. Yep. Though, yeah. drying up but quick. they're, but they're going to keep shipping the water in. Yeah. They're not going to let it, you know, collapse. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, yeah, it's, it's, it makes you wonder what they're going to do. You know, how they, my, so my dad's ranch is like 20 miles well, was 20 miles just north of Lake Mead, the very tip of Lake oh, wow. Mead. And now it's like 
35 miles. Whoa. So wow. it's, it's, yeah, it's Do you know that, that old city that reappeared? What it was called? Yeah, St. Thomas. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was it, was it, I uh, went there. Under the under the lake? Under Lake Mead, yeah. What? And then when it dried up, all of a sudden the foundations and everything appeared and people started going out and taking pictures of it and yeah. stuff. I got to go there with And a they bunch found of all those dead bodies from the mafia. Really? Yeah, yeah, they found a whole bunch yeah. of them. Yeah. Whoa! That they thought would never show up again. <laughs> it makes sense because they were out of Vegas for so long. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's crazy walking through the desert because there's like plants everywhere and you can't tell, but there's boat parts because yeah. people yeah. were, you know, just you sink to the lake. bottom. Yeah. Right. Yep. And now it's all dried up and now. And like it came back for a while, but it's what's it's down way yeah, down it's again. Way down. It's down further. It came up a little bit and then went way down. It's all that global warming. Yeah. Mm, you don't bring in the end of the, the end is well, now. A lot of that's going to California, not just Vegas. Yeah, exactly. They're right. wiping a lot of it to Southern California. Oh, the lake need water. Mm -hmm. I think the bulk of it is actually going to, you know, California. It is. Yeah. Interesting. Water rights. Uh, that's the guy who was it Michael Burry the guy who the big short I don't know if you saw that movie where he he, he like oh right said hey the 2008 uh, housing crisis is coming he was the one that figured it out oh, yeah he yeah, says water's the next yeah, big investment I, I, I remember him yeah hmm. so well, he's I investing in like food it. transport and stuff like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but again if we if we would get the government out of the way we would figure out a way to you know <sighs> to re renew water because moisture doesn't leave the atmosphere no. i mean it, it doesn't uh so you just ha it just goes different places and it has to be used in a different way or 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 benefited in a different way so we would find ways to to you know either get the salt out of the ocean or whatever it might be yeah desalinate. i'm concerned with getting the government out of the way completely because of like nestle buying up water rights and yeah. land like corporations becoming the new government if we don't have antitrust well that's, what's I, that's yeah. what california is basically the reason all that water's being taken up in california is for almonds number one and then also a lot of the other water being bottled up in yeah. Nestle, which is a smaller a smaller portion of it but still significant the, the government protects nestle and allows them to do that correct. Yeah. this yep. government correct, correct. Yeah. well so and, been, yeah. yeah and the other you know like not to build on that too much because it'd be boring to talk about but <laughs> like the the courts are where like if someone's rights are violated we need the courts to go to and try to work it out mm -hmm. but we what we don't need is the government going in and doing all these uh preventive you know laws that actually make it so that we can't use the natural resources or we can't be free um if if nestle is like you know, putting toxic waste inside in, in, in into the rivers or whatever they might be doing, then the courts are there for the people to say, look, we're going to take Nestle to, to court. We're going to sue mm -hmm. them and stop them from this. Yeah. But for the government to come in and like say, we're going to regulate and control the entire process so no one benefits, I, I, think, I think that's where, we, where we've gone wrong. Emily Payton says goats are better than cows, hands down. Yeah, we were thinking about getting a cow. But we were told they produce like eight to ten gallons of milk per day. Is that true? Well, yeah. If you have a like a Holstein or something, you don't yeah, have to. Cow. They don't have to be you can, producing milk. Is that what you were going to get them for? Those for the yeah, milk? Oh. like you know, not to kill and eat, but to have milk yeah, on hand. Yeah, you're going to have a milk cow. Yeah, they could produce up to twelve gallons a day. Yeah, twelve. Yeah. If they're like Luke, without GMO, drinking. without mm -hmm. any kind of like injections, uh, and we need a cow. I don't know, like what the organics. I should know. It's probably a little less, but uh, they still produce a lot of milk. So what do you and think, goats you or cows? What do you got? Uh, goats will do like you know probably a a gallon, gallon and a half. You know? Wow, a, a yeah. gallon wow. Of a day with a good yeah because you and, and it's fattier, twice fattier. a day, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. sometimes three times a day. Yeah, depending. And so they'll yeah they'll produce probably a gallon and a half a, a day. Do you have a wow. preference, cow or goat? Well, goat. Cows have three stomachs, so their milk is very even, and it's that's why we use cows for milk. Mm -hmm. Goats don't, so like if they eat a weed or something like oh, that, no. it's, it's <laughs> nasty, it yeah. and it has a you know, so you, I, I, it, it can be really really good, and it's really good for you. Like babies who are lactose intolerant can usually handle goat's milk, yeah, and me too. Uh, so it's really good for you. So mm -hmm. yeah, go for oh, that's goats. Cool. That's awesome. But and, and I heard that they're fattier. So if you want to make cheese and stuff, goat yeah. is better. Goats, right. you know, unless there's certain like uh, like a a uh, Jersey uh, will will produce more uh, in in cows. They'll produce more uh, cream than like a Holstein. So, mm -hmm. but goats are great. But yeah. there's like smaller cows, right? They don't produce as much. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean. You get a nice little small jersey. That's great. It's yeah, great. but you know, as my, people are like, get goats, and I'm like, yeah, because you get you know one goat, and like you said, the, the people are advising maybe get two dwarf yeah. goats or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like cows are funny. 
You know, they stand there all day. <laughs> like whenever I drive past cows, they're just standing. They're not they're doing standing. anything. Is that all they do? They just stand there? They yeah. Just... <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they it's eat, funny. They just eat all day. Long. Yeah. Eat, all eat, I find eat. it entertaining. So. We have a uh, chicken city. I don't know if you saw it. I the saw way. that. Yeah. That's good. Cool. There, there, uh, I was reading on Wikipedia. It said humans find their behavior entertaining. And I was like, this is, this is a verified, confirmed. <laughs> so if you were going to advise a budding rancher, what would be the first ranch animal or, or group of them animals that they should focus on? Well, I mean, it, if you, if you're doing it for food or you're doing it for money, that's that's what. Okay, that's, that's what, a good. That's, that's the first really thing you got to decide for surviving the apocalypse. Yeah, mm -hmm. for surviving. Well, so uh, actually, rabbits will produce more meat in a year's period of time than two rabbits. Uh, you know, male and a female rabbit will a buck and a doe will produce more meat than a bull and a cow. Mm -hmm. uh, bovi but bovine in one year, and they're much easier to take care of. But you don't get enough fat from rabbits. No. You got to eat the I've marrow. Actually, yeah, that's true. That's true. So you got to have you got to go kill like a walrus or something or, or a <laughs> well, and then yeah. get lots of fat from it. So is there like like a pig maybe? Like could you supplement? Could you uh, uh, supplement the uh, the rabbit meat with like a fattier meat, like yeah, a pig or something? Pork. Um, yeah, pigs are like, you know. They got skin like humans almost, so they're like mm -hmm. sus susceptible to like cold and heat, oh. and you know you really got to the, take care of them. They t they're labor intensive. And if you if you I hear if you faint or fall in the pig pig's die, they'll eat you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. yep. So so like get it? Yeah, get a. Uh, if I was to do it, I would get you know chickens. I would have a goat goats, and I would have I would still have cows. I'd still have you know, and then. Just have them where they can reproduce, and and that's a pretty good. Story. You know why chickens are funny? They're smart enough not to drink water they crap in, but not smart enough not to crap in their water. <laughs> and that's that. You know, so we get we had, we we had, when we first got the chickens, we noticed this, and someone sent us one of the 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 the, the water chicken water bins where it's got the little nozzles they can peck. Uh -huh. And I'm like, it basically solved the problem. Yeah. But man, they just crap where they stand, you know? Yeah. And it's so, just everywhere. So if you don't like have it where they can drink water without crapping it, they'll just thirst to death. Yeah. They, they stop drinking it. Yeah. So, I mean, this is what was happening to us. It was annoying. I'm like, well, why did you, even that we have, we have the brooders and the water setup is very difficult for them to crap in. They still figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. And the weirdest thing is when you look at the plastic, like the see-through plastic on the brooder, somehow they crap up onto it and like it's, and you're like, how did they do that? <laughs> I get that metaphor where you're like, the, the world elite think of us like chickens because it must be so frustrating to be like chickens. All I need is some fresh water. Quit. Why do they, and they are just too stupid to get it because they're chickens. Mm -hmm. They're always going to be too stupid. Yep. And is that what people think about me? Is yes. that like, he's just not going <laughs> to stop going to the grocery <laughs> store, man. He's just too <laughs> stupid. Ammon, do you want to shout anything out? Uh, I've got a, a really uh, detailed website at votebundy.com. Uh, People can donate there? They can donate there. They can find out what I'm all about. There's lots of videos. Uh, I've addressed abortion. I've addressed the groomers. I've, I've addressed, you know, a lot of hot topics there in videos. And uh, yeah, votebundy.com. Um, go subscribe to Twitter at Real Ammon Bundy. Um, yeah, support me. Right on. Uh, Idaho's looking really good, and we're we're making a big impact there. It's Amon, or Ammon. Ammon. I was like, it's not Amon. It's not <laughs> Ammon. It's Ammon. That's right. Um, it's Real A Bundy at Twitter. Correct. It's just the A, Real yeah. A. Okay. And uh, when people, Idahoans come in and check you out, when is the election? It's November 8th. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's... It's so you can, you know, they're doing the early ballot stuff already, uh, but yeah. November 8th is when we all go down and vote. Good talking to you, man. Yep, you too. Yep. Hey, man, Idaho in the chat. I see a lot of people here posting there from Idaho, so you know yes. I'm voting for you, man. Stand up. Thanks. We will see you all over at timcast.com at about 11 p.m. Thanks for hanging out. Cheers.